Hello and welcome to Hops and Brews. This week, we're doing barrel rolls. All right, so this week we're doing barrels. We're gonna talk about barrels and how to use them and how not to use them and what they do to beer and why they're so awesome. And I think it's probably gonna be like part one of like a thousand because I feel that barrels is something that it's kind of like not overshadowed in beer because it's popular, but uh, mostly something that we don't really know about. It's out there, people are using them, but we don't really know how <laughs> they really turned out and the proof is actually me. I don't know shit about barrels and today I'm gonna talk to you guys about barrels. Um, so first of all, uh, when we came out talking about barrels, me and Max, we talked about vessels. And first thing he told me is that it's not the first vessel ever invented by humans because at first we were brewing in oils, in clay pots, we were using just average stuff to ferment the first beers we were drinking. But at one point, we needed to sell that, to transport that beer, to make it happen. And that's when the invention of barrels came out. But what I want to point out is that today, in the modern age of barrels, we can find uh, <laughs> French oak barrels and American oak barrels. It's two kind of like the similar thing, but they do have some little things that makes them unique in their own way. French barrel. French oak barrels is a classic, instant classic, used a lot in wine. Those are characteristically <laughs> made uh, with a slight kind of like charred interior. So it makes it a little bit smoky, but with lower wooden tannins in it. When you compare it to the American ones, they're heavily charred and they have some vanilla undertones to them, Max. Am I right in this part of the kind of like barrel uh, spectrum? All right, so when it comes to barrels, there are a lot of things you have to consider. Uh, Chris mentioned American oak versus American, uh, sorry, American versus French. Yeah, that's uh, two of the biggest ones, but there's also uh, Hungarian, also Canadian. Canadian is actually, uh, for beer, depending on what kinds, would kind of be better. So. One thing, the one reason why there's a bunch of different, uh, well actually why the country of origin is important, why there's differences between them, uh, is in the pores of the wood. So, seasons will make it so that a tree is going to contract or contract a little less depending on if it's warmer or if it's colder. In France, there's more seasons, so there's more contraction, so your pores are a lot smaller, which means that less oxygen is actually coming inside of the wood. Uh, the only rival country to that would be actually Canadian oak, which is not very popular, uh, but depending on what style of beer you're brewing, you would want something that has less pores or more pores, depending if you want more oxygen. Yeah. The reason is yeast. Some different kinds of yeast are actually going to want more oxidation or less oxidation. So depending if you want to promote acetaldehyde or if you want to promote your lactic uh, producing bacteria, you're going to want more or less pores. Brett in general, uh, if you want it to ferment well, you don't want any oxygen. You don't, at least you want a reduced amount of oxygen in the barrel. If you want to promote more your lactic, you might want a little more, actually no, Opposite, sorry. Uh, lactic, you don't want any oxygen. Uh, acetaldehyde, you want oxygen. Brett, you don't want oxygen. So generally speaking, depending on what kind of beer you're producing, if it's a 100% barrel sour or if it's a 100% barrel Brett, uh, what flavors you want are gonna dictate what kind of barrels you take. <laughs> now, it doesn't stop there. Um, it also depends on what alcohol was in it before. As we know, beer generally, uh, when you're buying barrels, it's secondhand. It's from either a winery or a distillery. It's, it's, yeah. it's had another life before, and that character is in the barrel. Yeah. Um, when you said, Chris, earlier that we didn't know anything about barrels, it's not necessarily true, it's just that barrels have their own personalities, and the way you're gonna use them uh, is dictated by its personality. You might yeah. have a barrel that produces very, very acidic beers versus another one that's the same wood from the same place, from the same alcohol, that's gonna produce something a lot less acidic. So 
it doesn't become necessarily a game of, of prediction. It's a game of, all right, so this barrel produces acidity. This one does not. How do we blend it? The palate of the brewer then becomes really, really important when it comes to barrels. Okay. Um, to me, it's one of those really... Um, Nice. It's interesting. It's different. It's not brewing in the same way that we're used to. It's it's another dimension completely. And you have those Belgian brewers who have such developed palates, um, who are making consistent beers like the Rodenbach, uh, which should not be consistent because the process is anything but consistent. Sure, it's the same wort. Sure, it's the same culture, but it's not going to be the same every barrel. It's not going to be the same every time, depending on when you brew it. You're not going to promote the same uh, same yeast, same bacteria to ferment your beer the same way. Yeah. That's why blending and tasting your palate becomes really important. That's, that's quite what I had in mind speaking of brewing with a barrel. But when I was talking about that we don't know a lot about barrels, I think it's the culture around it. It's something that we lost in the ages of making barrels or using them as in or in our brewing process. We're using already created uh, oak barrels that comes from wine, that comes from whiskey, that comes from uh, our good neighbors in the United States from bourbon. It's like probably the most used uh, oak barrels out there because if you want to make bourbon, it's a one time use only. So usually the, these gets given away to other industries to use after that. Um, one cool thing I want to point out is uh, the guys at Matera here in Quebec. Uh, the guy that owns it is like an uh, apprentice barrel master. Like he started building his own barrels and he's learning from the remaining only uh, guy in Quebec that knows how to build uh, barrels here in Quebec. So I'm not sure how many barrel masters are left around the world, but it's something that it's uh, we're losing them. Uh, I, I, we need to raise awareness <laughs> towards barrels if we don't want to lose them. It's scary. I mean, it, it, is like, it is like smithing in the sense that there's not a lot of smiths left. It's, it's very, it's, it's that kind of craft that's very specific. Um, but as you've mentioned for, for bourbon and even for wine, there's still a big industry for barrels because they need fresh barrels for their products. They don't actually use other barrels. So for bourbon, it's a one-time use. So it's, it's still it's still around there. It's yeah. just maybe not as as big of a thing, but it's still it's still very in demand for some industries. Yeah, and you made a good point. I think uh, speaking about uh, Canadian oak, like we have a lot of trees here. It's something that literally grows everywhere, and. Uh, we have the characteristic of having many seasons, making the oak uh, <laughs> a little bit smaller in pores, so it make, uh, I guess, better barrels uh, for a longer period of time since the pores are a little bit smaller, the lead in less oxygen, which means a good thing when you're brewing, I guess, depending on what you're working with. But uh, I think there's a good, good, good venue out there with the industry kind of like booming here in Canada in general with the distilleries, but also with the beer and wine also, never forget about wine. But I think that our oak barrels should deserve a bit more recognition than uh, those wine barrels that comes from uh, California or uh, the Chardonnay barrels that comes from France. Not to, to uh, complain about that. I love a good, nice Saison <laughs> Asian Chardonnay barrels. It's just fantastic, the aromas that you get. It kind of has a nice natural breadth tone to it that I think it's just fantastic. And any bourbon barrel aged stouts here in America are just booming with flavors, nice booziness. And I think it's just adds a nice layer to a beer and just a small touch of barrel aging creates something amazing in beer. I, I'm a big fan of barrels. You definitely have to uh, consider the liquid that was in before the barrels, but it can add a lot to different styles. Um, yeah, uh, barrels are pretty interesting. It's another dimension of how to brew beer. Uh, and it's another very interesting way to brew beer, an interesting way to ferment your beer. Um, yeah, barrels. Uh, let us know in the comments below what you prefer, if it's more the wine barrels or the bourbon barrels, the whiskey barrels, the tequila barrels are also a thing. Uh, if you like the video, please subscribe, like, and share it. 
We'll see you guys on the next episode. And 